Impact of Influence. Covering true crime throughout the Southeast. Hello, friend. So grateful you're spending time with us. I am Matt Harris. Seton Tucker by my side, as you will see if you're watching the YouTube channel, Impact of Influence. You can also join in the conversation, Impact of Influence, on Facebook. When you go to the YouTube channel, please subscribe, make comments, share all that stuff, and uh, do the same if you're listening on one of the podcast apps. Uh, Seton, what do we got coming up in this episode? Well, we uh, last episode covered some of the reaction to our interview with uh, Juror 785, Myra, and uh, a lot of questions surrounded uh, her credibility and... uh, All the in-camera stuff. All the in-camera stuff. So we kind of looked back through some of the earlier court filings And we found a rough draft, a partial, uh, of of what happened in the in-camera hearing with Myra. And again, remember that uh, Joe McCullough is trying to get the, he's the attorney who uh, represents Myra and some other people involved in all this. And he's been trying to get it unsealed, the in-camera talk between uh, Judge Newman and the attorneys and Becky Hill. And also part of that is the SLED interviews with the uh with with Myra's tenants uh, yes who worked at Domino's yes and so my, that that is a part i don't think we mentioned last time because we kind of focused on the 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 conversations that happened backstage if you will of the trial but the 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 interviews with sled allegedly i guess not even allegedly there is video of them interviewing those uh tenants uh, is that is that definitely true? Do we know that I, there's for sure uh, I, video? I, I that's what I've been told. Okay. And uh, at the very least, there's going to be written affidavits. And the affidavits. Part of the problem is these uh, tenants of of Juror 785 say that the affidavits that they signed were not reflective of what they told Sled. Right, right. So, and they just signed them because they were there for eight or nine hours, and and um, they didn't read them. They just said, "This is what you told Sled." So they just signed them. And so uh, the transparency. And the only reason that they the state has said they would not unseal them is to protect the anonymity of Myra. Well, Myra doesn't have any anonymity anymore because she has the book, and she's been you know talking with us and others. Uh, we did have a little feedback. They're like, "Well, why wouldn't they read them?" You know, I don't know, but it just seems that this could easily be cleared up by releasing right. these tapes and releasing this transcript. Exactly right. And again, if you are one of the, the many that have barked at us about giving air to Myra and air to this alleged jury tampering, just what can we tell you? It's still out there. It's still going to be in front of the uh, South Carolina S- uh, Supreme Court soon. So it's still a thing somebody put on uh, Facebook. Uh, and Becky fake news still <laughs> facing ethics. Uh, yes. Investigation. Yes. So we are starting with what? Exhibit one, Seton? Yes. And let's just kind of read uh, from this rough draft of of the transcript from what happened in the in-camera hearing between Judge Newman and uh, Edgar and Becky 785 and, and Becky Hill. I know. I don't know. I don't think Becky Hill was in there. But oh, she's not in this one? No, no, she wasn't. But they talk about her. OK. But they talk about her. And this this was happened on February twenty eighth. Uh, this is after uh, allegedly Hill saw the the Facebook post that was on February twenty fourth, twenty seventh. Gets the anonymous email that's saying that Myra seven eighty five talked to her tenants February twenty seventh. They also interviewed the tenants. So here we go. This so, is from- and rightfully so, they brought her in to kind of question exactly what happened. Okay, so this opens. Uh, I will play the role of, and will not do him justice, uh, of Judge Newman, and you will be Myra. Yes. So here's how it goes. Uh, Judge Newman, have you put anything on Facebook? Not regarding this case. I put a positive post on, I gave Miss Becky my... My full access to my Facebook, I put positive posts on. I've done that for the past three years, but... Has anyone posted anything on Facebook about you and... 
I wasn't aware of it until Miss Becky told me today. What did she tell me? She told me, she asked me if I had an ex-husband, and I said, yeah. She asked me if I talked to him about the case or being on the jury, and I said no. And I questioned her as to why she was asking me that. I haven't seen my ex-husband since 2014. Does he live in the area? He does now. He lives in Cottageville. Okay. And I have three restraining orders against him. Warning. So he's basically up to no good. I wouldn't say that. I would say a lot worse. Hmm. But that's a nice way to put it. Okay. Um, and so then they talk a little bit about her communications with um, with her ex-husband about family situations. And then they kind of go back into... Um, well, she mentions this- I haven't seen him, talked to him, or anything else since 2014, other than getting restraining orders in Colleton in Orangeburg County, and one in Berkeley County. So that's three against him. Right. Okay, so uh, after Judge Newman hears all that, he goes, wow. And then my response, but Miss Becky said that she went to look for the post again and that it had been deleted. And I don't know who she talked to or anything else, but she said apparently. When did she tell you that? It was after you let us go on the last break. I was very upset. And she came down and talked to me and said, apparently, I don't know who talked to him, but said that he was drunk and he removed the post. So has she discussed the case with any of, well, any of the jurors? Has the clerk discussed anything about the case with anyone on that jury? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. She was just discussing with... She she pulled me aside, and when we went downstairs after last break... I want to say it was after the lunch break and we came back. That's when she first told me about it. And then we went back to the court. I was kind of screening the audience to make sure my ex wasn't out there. And she came downstairs after the break and she told me she found out that he was drunk and made a post. And I don't know what happened from there. I have no clue. And you work at the? I work at the monkey farm. Monkey farm. What do you do there? I work in a lab. For the lab, all I do is watch monkeys. It's a testing facility where they try to come up with cures for, like, AIDS, cancer, leukemia. Are you happy to be here away from the monkeys for a while? Uh, Yeah, I miss the monkeys. Are they pretty smart, as everyone says? They're intelligent, and they hurt and bleed and have feelings just like you and I do. They do. Yes. Uh, Excuse me while I turn page. Uh, Oh, here's Judge Newman again. Okay. At this point in time, have you made up your mind as to guilt or innocence, though? I haven't. I was trying to wait on closing arguments because those are usually pretty good. You been on jury duty before? I was, but it kind of really sucked because they called us back and we were, you know, anticipating. It was my first jury and they made up an agreement and we never got to sit on the jury. Okay. Any questions either for anyone to ask? This is Judge Newman asking of Griffin and Waters, uh, the attorneys for the state and uh, representing Alec Murdoch. Uh, Mr. Griffin for Murdoch goes, no, Your Honor. Mr. Waters for the state says, no, sir. Uh, Judge Newman says, okay, if you will stand right inside. Follow her? Follow her for a second. Gabby, just right outside, inside the other door, but not all the way out. And that's when Myra says, exited the room. And uh, Judge Newman talks to the attorneys again. All right. Comments? And then that's when Mr. Griffin, uh, who is representing Murdoch, says, Your Honor, I think that satisfies it. And she hasn't talked to anybody, hasn't expressed an opinion, and hasn't made up an opinion. And she's got an ex-husband that she has three restraining orders against him. So Newman says, that's understandable. Have a good night. Uh, This is when he judge or a jury, uh, Myra 75, comes back in. And and she says, thank you. She says, thank you. He says, okay. Uh, they're going to bring me back to my car, right? They didn't leave you, did they? Yes. Oh, they did. Then a law clerk comes in and goes, no, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll go get her to a bailiff, and they'll go get her. I'll go down there to a bailiff. They left. And I'll make sure they get her home, says the law clerk. Uh, finally. And there's a break in the proceedings. Yep, yep. And then she says, y'all have a good night. Yep. Okay. Bye, says Griffin. And then the Judge Newman again says, well. And then Creighton Waters says, I got a name now. Judge Newman says, a name. Clifford Dandridge, B Street. Oh, boy. 
I am not too pleased about the clerk interrogating a juror as opposed to coming to me and bringing it to me. Griffin says, I was surprised to hear that. Newman says, yeah, so, and there you go. There we have it. And uh, it does confirm one thing that she had said, Juror 785, was that Judge Newman had asked her where she stood on a verdict. Yes. It does confirm that. Now, I, we have questions, and that's why we're going to bring in your dad to help us answer some of these. Again, these are, this is only a very small part of what the uh, McCullough and others are hoping gets unsealed. Yeah, we don't have the entire transcript um, of of these in camera hearings, so it will, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see what the entire transcript. But at least we do have a little bit of a snippet that does corroborate some of the things that she told us. And I don't understand what the deal was and why they didn't have a couldn't have a bailiff around to get her to her car safely. She was worried about the ex husband. That was kind of a mess up, it seems to me. But all right. So, Seton, bring in your pops. Uh, we are bringing my dad. He's been a guest several times. He is a graduate of Penn Law School, is a professor at Temple Law School, and was a former uh, Fourth Circuit Clerk of Appeals law clerk. Uh, good. Third, third Circuit. Third, oh, third, third circuit. circuit. I'm no, well, we're Fourth Circuit, so I just have it in my mind. Third, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Matt, we got some questions for you. We gave you uh, a copy of the part of the end camera stuff, very small part of it. That was part of a filing, the original filing, to get a uh, a look at possible jury tampering. And this was from a year ago. This was from yeah. back September of 2003. But we decided right. to, to, to dig in to, to find the documents because of 785's book and talking to her. And so you saw this. The, the, the first thing that we wanted to ask, I think, is in this small segment, Judge Newman does ask Myra, 70, 75, egg juror, ask her if she's reached a verdict. Does she have an idea of how she would rule or whatever it is? Um, is that problematic in any way? Yeah, uh, I think it is. Uh... Uh, because it really had nothing to do with the issue as to whether or not uh, she should be disqualified or relieved from her jury duty. Um, you know, uh, the, the issue there was, was she talking and, and, and not following the judge's instructions outside uh, of the jury room and outside of the court as the judge properly instructed them every day. Um, I, my view is that it, that that's not the right thing that a judge ought to be doing. Um, it's 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 you know it's 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 a close call in many ways, but I don't think so. The other problem the defense has is that they were there, and they didn't object at the time to the question as to whether or not they waived it. Well, let me, you know there was we had a lot of feedback on our social media that people were very upset that um, when she says that Becky Hill the the former clerk of court, asked her about her opinion as to guilt or innocence, that this juror should have known better. And now we have the judge also kind of asking a similar question. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, who, 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 does this, who does this burden bear on? It shouldn't. I mean, I, I think as a, if I was on a jury and a court official, clerk of court, or the judge or anybody asked me, I would think it would be okay because they would know the rules better than I did. Yeah, I mean, I, from her point of view, I mean, I understand it, why she would answer it. But uh, as, as I said, I mean, I don't think a judge really, in this context, particularly where they were here, should have been asking that question. Uh, because, you know, that could shape and influence a way a, a, a juror thinks about the case in some way. So, therefore, I'm, I'm not sure it's, it's the right thing that the judge should have been doing. Let me ask you this, though. So, uh Eric Bland has said that the fact that the juror 785, when Becky Hill asked her in her office, where do you stand? What is your and she answered automatically she should be disqualified because she's talking about the case with someone. But that someone is a representative of the court. So that's I would think it's kind of murky there. But 
from a legal standpoint, you know, if you talk to the clerk of court about it, does that count? Uh, you know, I think, Eric, with all due respect to Eric Bland, I don't think he's correct. Uh, I think that that is a situation where a, a person of authority comes to a juror who deals with the juror on every day, really the own, only court personnel who's probably dealing with him every day, and asks her a straightforward question, and she doesn't know, and she answers it. That not, that oughtn't to be a way to disqualify the juror. It, it maybe should go to the entire issue as to whether or not the clerk of court acted inappropriate with regard to the way she conducted herself with this juror, which I know is the main issue on appeal. Well, let me ask you. Another thing that uh, Myra says in some of these interviews is she overheard other jurors uh, speak about the case. I guess she was a smoker. There were, I think, six smokers on this jury, and they would leave. And and she says she didn't talk about it, but she hears other people discussing the case. Amongst themselves. Amongst themselves. Should she have reported this to somebody? Uh, Yeah, uh, I think she probably should have reported it to probably the judge. Uh, and I think that that was be something that should have been done. I mean, I understand why it doesn't happen, and probably as a practical matter, in, in many many cases, there, are, you know, are those informal discussions while the case is going on, and people don't technically follow what the judge said. But that that's wrong, and if that came out, that may be a valid reason for a mistrial. Now, you also told us you uh, did a little digging into South Carolina law and how you might have filed something maybe a little differently to get certain things uh, admitted to the court. Can you touch on that with us? Yeah. Right now, the, you know, the appeal does, uh, is, is, you know, is, it deals with the, you know, the hearing that happened below with the former chief judge of the Supreme Court, who was really stepping in for Judge Newman, who had retired. Mm-hmm. And the evidence there was limited to the, jurors that uh, that uh, had been questioned and the affidavits and other information had been put in. My understanding is that nothing was put in with regard uh, to this uh, juror number 685 of the egg juror. Uh, and that as a result, that's not part of the record on appeal that's going to be considered by the court. And generally, the rule is that new evidence uh, generally cannot be introduced on appeal. Um, uh, you know, it's only what happened at the hearing, the trial that happened below. But there is a basis under the uh, South Carolina Appellate Court Rules 212, which allows you to add certain information. Uh, and I believe what the rule looks to is is in, you have to file a motion. And you look to see uh, it, it, what you're really asking the court under that rule is to take judicial notice of, and I think it says highly indisputable facts or other court proceedings that directly relate to the issues on appeal. And I think that there are a number of bases that this relates to it, most particularly with regard to the conduct of the clerk of court, which is the underlying basis of all the other issues that are being mm-hmm. raised. Um, and it also begins to raise some issues uh, with regard, as you guys properly raised, with regard to the entire proceedings and maybe even some questions of the uh, trial judge at that time. So I think that it's highly relevant, uh, and I think it would enhance their appeal. And if you file that motion now, you basically begin to highlight it to the court. Uh, So the court sees it in a society that's going to grant you leave to add that to the evidence, and then you get a second uh, opportunity to to argue that uh, in your brief to the court. So I think it would be a good strategic move for the uh, for the uh, appellants or the defense to add that at this time. Let me ask you, okay, so they could add something. For instance, in the evidentiary hearing, Myra Egger 785 was not, uh, did not testify in front of Justice Toll. So right. could this, this rule that you're talking about, 212, that could add her, her um, not her testimony, but her official affidavit or whatever could be added? It could add that court transcript. Okay. That happened before Judge Newman, which I think yeah. is, is, as I said, meets the standard of highly 
uh, relevant indisputable facts. No one can dispute that that hearing happened. But um, so, so I want to get back to some of the juror conduct. You know, Myra said that the jurors were discussing the case amongst themselves during these smoke breaks. We also know it's it's kind of indisputable that um, during the evidentiary hearing, uh, some of the jurors were actually watching or they were on social media following what was happening as uh, people were t- testifying. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justice Toll found out about it. Uh, this was actually happening in the jury room and they had been instructed not to not to follow any right. of this and they were doing it. Uh, how does any of that play into this? Well, well, it does. I mean, you know, you could argue that all of that stuff together shows that the proper process for the trial uh, during the trial was not followed, and therefore uh, a new trial should be ordered because of that. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of that is in the discretion of the judge, and I guess on the issue you're talking about, Judge Toll decided that it was harmless error, and therefore uh, they ought to move forward. But I think that when you begin to accumulate everything that was going on in this case, uh, from the clerk to what you uh, were kind enough to show me uh, the last couple days in the record before Judge Newman when he was questioning juror uh, 785, uh, as well as, uh, you know, uh, you know what, what you're telling me now was happening uh, during the trial when the jurors were apparently uh, checking social media at certain points uh, and or congregating uh, when they were smoking cigarettes and talking about the case. All of those things together, when you couple with everything else, uh, the, the, it, 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 it begins to re- almost require that you consider, it was, did, did he really get a fair trial? And, yeah, and let me say, as I said before, this doesn't go to Murdoch's uh, innocence or guilt. What this really goes to is whether or not the system worked. Well, and, and we should upon- note that uh, many of these other jurors deny that any of this happened. The other jurors say they were not discussing the case. So mm-hmm. we're hearing this from Myra. She's saying that right. these th- things happened. But we should note that the other jurors are saying that they did- this did not happen. Yeah, but, I mean, just the fact that one juror is saying it does is part of the evidence that ought to be considered on appeal. What, what On the, on the uh, one part of the in-camera thing we have, Judge Newman asks, uh, so as she discussed the case, Becky Hill, with any of any of the jurors, has the clerk discussed anything about the case with any on that jury? And uh, mm-hmm. 785 says not that I'm aware of. So my question would be this. I, you, you, th- 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 I don't know if that's etched in stone or it's something where you can say, listen, she was just fired at a bunch of stuff. She was just told that her ex-husband who has you know she has these training orders against you've got multiple uh people in this room the judge and attorneys and stuff that maybe she held to that answer or she could she later say like okay man there was a lot going on there when he asked me that question i took it one way or meant the other way do you understand what i'm saying like is she held to that answer yeah i mean it was a question and i'm trying to get it up on my screen here was the question whether or not she discussed with other jurors, or did she hear other jurors discussing it? I'll tell you, the, the exact wording was, so has she, I assume referring to Becky Hill, so has she discussed the case with any of any of the jurors? Has the clerk right. discussed anything about the case with anyone on that jury? She says, not that I'm aware of. Right, right, right. And I think what you're talking about, though, I thought was that the jurors themselves during breaks, we're discussing it. Oh, um, no, I think it's, I think she told us that, but I think what what Judge Newman was asking was if if Myra was had overheard uh, Clerk Hill discussing the case with right. any of the other jurors. Right, exactly, exactly. And that's my point. I mean, it's, I think it's a little bit different, Matt, because okay. uh, I think she apparently she didn't hear. It. That's not inconsistent okay. with the part that she knew that other jurors between themselves were discussing. Oh, uh, yes, right. Two separate Two separate questions. things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Um, any other final thoughts from uh, you, Matt? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, the way I look at it is this. I mean, in terms of the transcript that you gave me, uh, I mean, the first thing I would look at would be what action should the defense or appellants take with regard to it? And I think they ought to be filing a motion to add it to the record as highly relevant information uh, in a court proceeding. 
uh, to the underlying issues that are before the court. And I think that's an important thing to do. Uh, the second thing is I think you guys properly raised was the was, you know, judicial conduct about the court asking about her views on the verdict. And I think we discussed that. I think that that really is an issue. Uh, uh, but almost more important in some ways is, once again, it highlights the action of Becky Hill, the clerk. Uh, you know, why was she even the judge said at the end of the transcript that he wasn't exactly pleased with the fact no. that she went off and did all this without reporting it to him. Um, mm-hmm. And then and then the third issue is, 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 as I said, uh, yeah, it, it starts to create other issues down the line by the failure of the defense counsel uh, uh, to uh, to object at various points during it and do other things, as you guys have noted throughout your podcast. Um, and so, therefore, uh, you know, you begin to wonder, and I know these are great lawyers, but you begin to wonder down the line, is Alex Murdoch going to begin to think that maybe he can make some argument on it? ineffective counsel or something like that to mm. get a new trial. Interesting. Interesting. I have one other thought rereading this transcript a couple of times over the last few days is, did you notice that she gave, uh, Myra gave Clark Hill access to her entire Facebook? Is that normal? <laughs> that you would, no. <laughs> like you would. <laughs> no, I mean, that's, you know, that, that once again, that's why it ought to be added to the record. It goes to show that this clerk was going beyond what she should be doing and interfering with the trial. And, and and that coupled with the other evidence that apparently the Supreme Court was concerned enough about that they granted the, you know, the emergency, the, the appeal on it, uh, that I think that that is additional heavy evidence that would help the defense to argue for a new trial. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you once again for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Appreciate my pleasure. it. And as I said, you know, I, you know, these are just my humble views. I'm not a... <laughs> South Carolina lawyer. I'm sure all the lawyers in this case are great and they're doing a good job. But, you know, as I look at it, this is what I'm seeing. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Dad. Bye. So off he goes. Uh, as we've said before, you can reach us on uh, Impact of Influence Facebook page and the YouTube channel. And there are comments about our comments. <laughs> there are comments about the comments. <laughs> So, yeah, we've had a lot of heated debate on our Facebook page. Uh, one blog S uh, says, I love the interview. Everyone uh, who has an I love that you interview everyone who has an interesting viewpoint, even if it's someone I may not like. I never have to worry about y'all giving bias information from the podcast. And I love mm. that you respect your audience enough to give them access to so many different voices. That's how you cultivate a smart, an audience smart enough to come to their own conclusions in thoughtful ways. I love that comment. Uh, then I might find find one to see. Read, read Mac Morrison's comment. I thought that was really – he's a long-time listener. It's, it's down – Okay, there you go. Long-time listener. I do appreciate that you present both sides of the Murdoch case and have interviewed just about everyone associated with the case. I don't find Juror 785 credible based on your interview. I have not watched her anywhere else. I do take exception with the comment that you made on today's show regarding a juror discussing the case with the clerk of court. The jurors were told not to discuss the case with anyone, emphasis mine, anyone includes the clerk of court. What is so difficult to understand? Why couldn't she follow the rules as they were set out? If she had, she may have stayed on the jury. The other juries didn't have a problem following these orders. Oh, we talk about this a little bit in our episode today. Yeah. Uh, and I, I thought my dad had a good point. Um, also... I don't know that all the jurors did follow all of the rules. We don't know that for sure. We don't know that for sure. It seems to be a little bit in debate. Um, again, serving on a jury is a tough job, especially a jury that had to be there for six long weeks. Yeah. Uh, is there any other quick comments? Uh, Patrick uh, says that all the folks from SC can sound a little bit country on air. However, that <laughs> does not mean we are not credible and wise enough to form and, and this and wise. And this former juror was both. Yeah. I believe she was and has a story that needed sharing and this podcast was tremendous as always we appreciate it thank you for listening yeah thank you very much uh like we've said before and i'll say it again for others who are giving personal attacks to myra or the other juror that's been mentioned i think it's just ridiculous you can say like oh i don't believe her or i think she's making it up but when you you know attack their intelligence or 
anything about them physically or anything like that. It's disgusting. Yeah, I, I think there's a respectful way to disagree, and I would encourage everyone to do that. And don't do the personal attacks. Uh, Impact of Influence, Facebook, YouTube channel. Thank you so much, and we'll talk soon, friend.